Good evening and welcome to Night Prayer on Monday the 22nd of November. My name is Vicky, for those who don't know me, and I'm part of the leadership team at St Thomas's Church in Blackpool. The order for Night Prayer can be found on our church website, uh, but please don't worry because it is a very simple act of worship at the end of the day to just focus on the presence of God and to relax in that presence as we come to rest. And if you would like to have a candle lit or have a cross in front of you, please feel free to do either of both of those things. The reading uh, this evening is a beautiful reading from uh, the Old Testament, from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. So if you'd like uh, to find that in your Bibles, again, please uh, do take the time to do that. It's Isaiah 40, verses 1 to 11. So let's just begin with a moment's quiet as we still our hearts and minds and gather all those um, scattered thoughts and feelings from today and be ready to focus on the presence of God. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And we're now just going to spend a few moments while each of us thinks back on the day that has passed and the things that for which we need to turn to God and, and ask for his forgiveness where we have perhaps not lived up to the image of him that is within us where we've grieved him and after a We've allowed a few moments. I'm going to read the confession from Christ the King Sunday, which was yesterday. So let's just take a few moments of quiet. O King, enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In our sinfulness we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. And the words of the night prayer song said as a poem. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you, with steadfast love, would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. And so we turn to our scripture reading from Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 to 11 
Comfort for God's people. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the breath of the Lord blow, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. So say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See the Sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Isaiah is one of the prophets who heard from God and spoke his words to God's people. Here in the book of Isaiah, in, in chapter 40, a change occurs in what God is saying. And the chapters that follow focus on the majesty of God and how appropriate it is this week particularly as yesterday was Christ the King Sunday. Yesterday marked the end of the church's calendar year. The church's year is made up of seasons and it will begin afresh next week with Advent, that season of preparation for Christmas, looking forward to the birth of Jesus as a baby. And so it is so right to exalt Jesus as our King. That's how the church's year ends, with the kingship of Christ. And it should permeate all the way through the seasons as we celebrate different seasons throughout the year. But Jesus is our King, our rescuing King, our saving King. His power and authority is greater than any other. He was there at the, at the creation, the beginning of the world, the creation of the universe, and yet as scripture tells us, he did not cling to equality with God, but was born, became a servant, took on our human nature in order to die on that cross at Calvary to save us from our sins. the majesty of God in Jesus, who will come again to judge all people and rule the earth. 
But the words here in Isaiah chapter 40 are not words of impending doom and judgment. They're words of comfort. How beautiful is that word and that concept? Comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she's received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. It would be another 100 years of trouble for the people of Judah, God's people. Then Jerusalem would fall and then there would be a further 70 years of being in exile. It's a long time. Generations would come and go and their faith would be sorely tested. But here we hear the words that are seeds of comfort spoken by God through Isaiah. Seeds of comfort that would take root in the soil of hardship and turmoil. And there's a lesson here for us that if we allow God, even in our darkest moments, to speak to us, tenderly, words of comfort that may not take away the trouble, the sadness, the pain, the adversity, but that will give us strength, strength to stop us from falling apart in those difficult times. The greatest comfort, of course, is that one day we will be with God in glory, in eternity, where he'll wipe away every tear, where there will be no more pain or suffering and no more death. In the words that follow in this scripture, and, and I do ask you in this week to spend some time rereading this passage, all of it, verses 1 to 11, because there's so much in these words. Allow God to speak to you personally through them. In these words, we see the picture of a wasteland, which can represent our own life's trials and struggles and sufferings. But we who believe must remember that we're not immune to suffering and we're not immune to, to trouble. But our faith does not have to be hindered by that. Isaiah encouraged the people to be prepared to see God work. That may not be for a long time, but he was encouraging them to be open to the fact that God, sovereign God, is able to move and work and perform miracles. So I, I ask you to spend time this week and allow yourself to be prepared to see God work. Perhaps in a, a very new and a different way in your life. God's capable of doing that. Be comforted. God knows you and everything that is going on in your life. He speaks tenderly to you. He is our shepherd king, the shepherd that gathers his flock, that holds the lambs, us, close to his heart. Be still and reflect on the comfort and the encouragement of God's word, of God's presence, and in fellowship 
with those who believe. Later in these verses, we are compared to grass and flowers. Yes, indeed, we come and go. We are mortal. But God's word is eternal. It is constant and it is unfailing. And I ask you to seek solace in the promises of God's word. I will never leave you nor forsake you. There's no greater love than that which we find in Jesus Christ. And nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus. Experience that once again this week as you go through your daily lives. Be prepared. Be prepared for, for God to enfold you with his love and embrace you and co co gather you close to his heart. It is the most beautiful thing that he loves us with an everlasting love. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Amen. And so in that knowledge that our God knows us, knows everything about us, let us turn to our prayers. Heavenly Father, we come before you, each in our individual ways. Lord, you know each one of us, what is happening in our lives around us. Lord, you know the joys and you know the sorrows of this life. Speak to us now, Lord. Let us again hear your tender words of comfort. Lord, we thank you that you are not, you are not a God who stands far off, but you are a God who lives with us. In the time to come, in these coming weeks, we will celebrate Jesus as Emmanuel, God with us. And it's sometimes too much for us to understand, Lord, that the God of the universe, the God who created all things, is the God who knows us personally. So, Lord, in a few moments of quiet, hear the cries of your people as they name before you the things that trouble them, the people that they pray for. And so, in a few moments of quiet, bring to God your own personal prayers what is on your heart and mind. In our fellowship at St. Thomas's, we pray for our leaders. We pray particularly for our Vicar Dave, for Alison and Josh. We pray for our curate, Emma, for our church warden, Pauline. For those who 
work on the Standing Committee and the Parochial Church Council, praying, O oh Lord, that you will give them wisdom as they talk about the way forward for the church, seeking your vision, making decisions on, and, and doing practical things. Lord, guide, guide us and inspire us by your Holy Spirit. We pray for our baptism team, our pastoral care team, the prayer line phone, starting point, our brew in a chat on a Monday, our worship team, all those who are on practical work teams. Lord, we thank you for the blessing of fellowship that you have brought us together. Lord, strengthen our unity. May we be of one heart and mind in Jesus. And we want to declare to the community around us that Jesus Christ is Lord, that Jesus is the King, that nothing and no one is beyond his power and his authority. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful answers to prayer that we've seen. And we speak a blessing over all our community over those who live next door to us, those who live on our street. Lord, we thank you. Bless them. Meet them in their every need. And may we see people coming to Christ and acknowledging him as their saviour. We pray for those we know who are sick at this time, at home or in hospital. And we pray particularly for Anne and Ian, for Diane, Jack, Sheila, Leah, Louise, Debbie, for Nick and Joanne. For Norman and Jean. For all those, Lord, who are waiting for uh, diagnoses to be uh, told to them, for those who are waiting for operations, any surgical procedures. Lord, we, we do pray for our brothers and sisters across Blackpool, people from other churches and fellowships who are struggling at this time in body, mind or spirit. God of all healing, bring your comfort, strength and peace, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as we remember our world, Lord, I know, we can cry and and be heartbroken at some of the images that we see on the news or we hear about. Lord, we pray where there is conflict, where there are people who are struggling because they have had to flee their homes. We pray particularly, I pray, Lord, for those that are, are, are in very little shelter on borders trying to escape oppression. But they have very little. Lord, we, I pray fervently that help will be sent, that you will raise up men and women of faith to meet the needs of these people, the men, women and children who are facing a winter with no home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we bring before God those who this night grieve because they've lost someone that they love. 
Lord, we have spoken about your comfort. Speak tenderly to those who know the loss of someone they love. May they know your comfort and your peace surrounding them, upholding them. And bring to them, Lord, people who will speak your word of comfort and care for them at this time. And so being made one in the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray in the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Visit all our homes this night, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from them the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us in peace, and may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so as we come to the end of night prayer tonight, thank you for sharing this time with me and thank you for being open to God at this time. If you lit a candle at the beginning, please do remember to extinguish it before you go to sleep. And may you rest and recover this night and wake refreshed in the morning. And so in peace, we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. And for those who know the blessing in Numbers chapter 6, we bless each other with these words. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord turn his face towards us and give us peace. Amen. Good night and God bless.